Well, gang, it's Jacob Markstrom's rink, and we're all just lucky to get an invite. That was wild, Rhett. That Did might have been one of the best overtimes no one... I've seen this season. Did you get invited? No one invited me. No? I must have gotten lost in the mail. Hmm. Yeah, forgot to check the mailbox, apparently. Is he... People still mail things? Nothing you want. Yeah, parking tickets mostly. Yeah, insurance yeah. bills, parking tickets, maybe some delinquent accounts. I don't know if it happens. Just... Uh, yeah. Flames make it two big wins against top-notch teams. 3-2 OT thriller, courtesy Nazem Kadri's 20th goal of the season. Man, it, Calgary was the better team throughout the first period, and from there it kind of felt like they were hanging on for dear life, but they really came on in overtime again. That was about as exciting in overtime as I've watched in a long time. Usually the old overtime leaves you wanting more because they get the puck and they cycle it and cycle it and cycle it and nothing ever happens. But this was kind of a down and back affair. I loved it. It was good. The Let's goalies were really that. trying to drive it there. Like we saw Allmark. Yes. It looked like he was going to hold for the whistle and said he like pushes it right back out to uh, get Mark the odd man rush going the other way. How did he stop that? Or did he put it into him? Was it a bad shot, or did Markstrom actually have to make that save? Either way, I guess. I know. It's kind of like maybe it's on par when guys do like the big windmill glove save. Oh, yeah. Just... Touch of theater. Yeah. 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 Either way, I liked it. It was good. If Jacob Markstrom played way back in the day, he definitely would have tried to carry the puck over center ice at some point. Well, you know what? The way he's playing, maybe he should. Maybe they should have just give him the puck and said, "You go. You're you're clearly the best player on the ice. So, do what you need to do." He clearly was. Obviously, there's a uh, one goal in there that he would really love to have back. It was in the uh, first the period. Point. He came out to retrieve the puck. Hesitates a second as Marshan comes at him, and then he just gets stuck high and. Uh, Coil rips well, along. Well, Cammy, what would you do if Marshand was coming at you? You'd fumble the puck too, because he might run right through you and crush you. So I get it. That's not Marshand's Actually, fault. That's you the, know what? I I didn't think we were going to get to this this early in the broadcast, but I know exactly what I would do if Brad Marshan came at me. So <laughs> I was going to pull this up later in the show. Cammy but it Cam. seems like the right time. So when I was like, not even a year out of college, I got to uh, cover the Maritime NHLers for Kids Golf Tournament. And, like, I'm by myself. I'm running my own camera. But Brad Marshan crashed my live hit. And I do not recover well. <laughs> I look I'm Tammy Kepke in Moncton, where Maritime <laughs> NHLers are. <laughs> That's Brad Marshan ruining, like, my first live hit. <laughs> I'm Cammy Kepke in Moncton, where Maritime <laughs> NHLers are. <laughs> I did not clip the rest of it at the time, so it was really embarrassing because I just kind of like. <laughs> do you, that to you, Jane. I mean, you silly goose, Brad. <laughs> you should have devastating. Tripped you should have devastating. You throwing your microphone, you son of a. I know, like he he clocked me with the bag too. <laughs> like, were you live? Yeah. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> Shit. If I ever cross paths with you again, well, you might lick your face. Better be careful. I'll respond with the burr. I was just kind of <laughs> the fingers at him. <laughs> Poke him in the eyes. Mm. Look at I made notes. I had all kinds of. What's plans. your favorite note? What's your favorite uh, note in there? Listen, Cammy, you complete me. Like, if it was Boomer, I would just let. Uh, make him work harder you i'm trying to contribute i made notes tonight i had a piece of paper i had seven beer i had a pedialyte i mean i'm prepared i'm ready for this so what was my for my first little note i love how shillington is so excited to be playing right now he's pumped he's having fun he's skating like the wind mm -hmm. Sign him up for another five years. Let's go. But God, he skates like the wind. What a gift. What a gift to have. Huh? He's got nice teeth, too. Did you? What? He's got, he's got really nice teeth. Does he? 
<laughs> did you see the video? <laughs> I didn't see the video. I'm going to have to look a little closer. And I hope he gets to keep those teeth because they're a, uh, they, they, they tend to go missing the f more you play. Okay. Well, might as well. Can I keep going with my notes, Cammy? Yes, please, please. please Don't interrupt me ever again. Uh, not enough love for Ryan Huska right now. Really? I, I think that he's a group of guys that he has to put a belief into that group because those guys have been around the block, Kadri and all these guys. They can, you can squint to see that maybe a playoff is possible, but you probably know the GM is going to make some trades. It's going to diminish your chance of making the playoffs, but they're still showing up and playing their ass off. 90% of the time that's on the coach in a good way, in a good way. I feel like it must've been even harder for him to do that because he was a part of the team last shit. year when things just felt so sour for so long. Yeah. The shit storm, but maybe that's the good thing. Maybe he, you know, being through it, he's like, well, I don't want to do that again. So he's, he's given him a different option on how to approach things, but I just, that's a game where the, <laughs> It's getting close to the trade deadline. You see guys that are probably going to be moving. It's it's harder to keep that intensity up and that work ethic up. But those guys, like you said, I think the, the Flames came out, they jumped the Bruins, and they were ready to go, and they played pretty well. They kind of had to hang on a little bit second and third. I mean, what were they out shooting them early on? Pretty good, and I don't think they ended up out shooting them. But it was fourteen seven at one point. Yeah, in the it, period. Yeah. So, but nonetheless, I still think the team was there to play, right? Like, and that's against one of the best teams in the NHL. So, and that to your was point about Huska too, like it's cool to see, like, kind of the way we've seen him send messages on ice has kind of just been by dictating players' ice time, and we do see Kuzmenko come off that top line. I know Husker doesn't really number his lines, but he comes off that big line for a while. And then we start to see Dryden Hunt get some reps up there. And he actually was pretty good up there. He had a couple of good looks. Oh, I could play up top line with him. Move me up there. It's easier to play with the top guys than the bottom guy. <laughs> Rhett plays wing? What? <laughs> no, you got to be able to skate. Sorry. I over-exaggerated my abilities. But you're right. He's controlling their ice time. He's sending messages with that. And Clearly, he's got a level of respect from the guys, and they want to play for him because if you're a coach that takes ice time away from a guy and he doesn't like you, he gives you the bird. He goes, yeah, that's fine. Don't play me. I'll collect my check, and I'll move on, and you'll be gone before me. Those guys aren't doing it. They're trying to play for him, and he, he, he's, he's got a good vibe going in that dressing room. Yeah, you wouldn't, I don't think we'd see anything ever devolve into like what we saw with Pierre-Luc Dubois and John Tortorella. It doesn't feel that way, no. Now not. again, I think Pierre-Luc Dubois has a few of his own issues, so maybe maybe that's on his head, but still. I, I, I really think that we're underestimating how much impact Husk is having. Interesting. He's been very insightful in his questions, too. I've appreciated... He's not the giving look behind the, the curtain that he's given us this season. Yeah. yeah, the dumb answers. Yeah. But, you know, I, I always said it to Boomer and Pinder. Reporters tend to ask stupid questions. There's some that are definitely designed to get a raise out of people. But for me, my pet peeve is when um, tell me about questions are asked or yes, no questions are asked. You got to get in there with the hows, the whys, and the whats. There you go. So. We're some dumb folk. We don't know that much. Teach us things. <laughs> Except for Megan Mickelson. Megan Mickelson has the most hockey sense out of anybody on a Flames broadcast. And see, I was going to try and get a guess. Maybe Megan should have been our guest tonight. Because yeah. Conroy absolutely Yeah, did well. Rhett literally was, tried to get Connie on the show tonight. <laughs> I had a few beer, and I'm like, I'm going to wow everyone on Afterburner. I'm going to get a big guest here and i reached up to conroy crickets bastard oh wait wait now this would be the get of the year folks <laughs> not happening <laughs> uh, okay. come on hey, connie we, give us a statement <laughs> we tried we tried we did our best that would have been the highlight of the night 
but we got another good one for you. Here's our Betway highlight of the night. How have we not? Puck in the zone. It has to reset the defenseman, blah, 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 blah. No, he just skated down to score. Beautiful. Here. Pick him up. Not I, bad, not bad. It's very good. There's, there's a lot to be happy about tonight. You want my next? You know who else I think played well? Huberto. He did, didn't said, he? I've never said that before in my life. No. So. Oh, not charitable. Not charitable, Brett. What no. would he do that impressed you this time around? I just felt like, I just feel like he's more invested lately. It seems like he's around it more. He made a pass. I think it was the third period where he lofted it over guys to, to uh, was it Hannafin going wide or whatever? But it was like, okay, now I'm starting to see some of it. And clearly he's starting to feel it a little bit. So hopefully that's uh, it continues to grow for him because that's a long contract and we don't need to see him play like he did last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's not highlight of the night worthy, though. That was your bet no. way. Highlight of the night. Get the app on your phone and bet the responsible way with that way. But I feel like, uh, to your point about Huberto, when we talk about things that he does well, usually we focus on the passing. I think when he's playing kind of physical, that's kind of when we tend to see a little bit more out of him. And we did get some of that from him on the boards tonight. Getting involved physically is probably not what I've ever, yeah, no, would have. But I, I think we're in a couple are, against the Kraken this year for sure. Yeah, but when you are engaging physically, that just means you're in the game. Like you're invested in it. If you're avoiding it and shying away from it and not engaging in it, that just means you're not you're not there to win. Again, so a lot of this has to go back to Huska. Kadri playing the way he is. Hubert are coming around. The, the, the young guys feeling comfortable and, and important. Like you can bring young guys up and insert them in the lineup, but if you don't play them the right way and give them the right situations, include them. And that's not babying them. I'm not saying to you that you call them up and just feed them full of ice. They've got to earn it, but I think that they all feel like Husk has got their back. If they go out and play the way they're supposed to and the way they're capable of, they know they're going to get rewarded, but they also know if I don't show up and play, I'm not going to get that ice. Like He's taken ice away from a lot of guys. And I, it's Anyway, I, uh, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe my beer is talking, but I just think that he... I think he's controlling this group very well. I think your beers are treating you just fine. Just fine. Yay. Hell maybe yeah. Should, what else do you have on that sheet? Maybe there? I should have more. Yeah. Okay. I can't <laughs> you say won't this. Do it. I can't say this Sasker's name. Who's the new defenseman? You say his name. Pahal. Pahal. I want to see him punch someone in the face. I wanted to see Pospisil and Marshan get into it. We saw it a touch. And Pospisil, nope. like, immediately went to the penalty box. <laughs> but. I don't know if Pospisil could fight because I was working or volunteering for the Flames, and he got dummied his first year down in the minors. And it, it, I don't care if he fights. I'm not. It's more about his brain is, I, I, if he fights, I really worry that if he gets drilled with another one, that it's one of those head injuries that he... It, He's had too many of those concussions. I just worry about it with him. Mm -hmm. Can you say the defenseman's name again? Pahal. Pahal. I'm saying I want to see him punch someone in the face because he's a big guy, and if he if he smacks a few guys around, he's going to get a lot more room, which is going to allow him to do more stuff. And I, I, I Dar England, who was here in the past, He's not going to be that, but if you add that element to your game, you establish yourself as an everyday NHLer, and and you will garner some more respect, and it will give you a little more space, a little more time, and make the game easier for yourself. I like how he's playing. Mm -hmm. I just think that if he does add that, there's another element to his game and it makes him all that more valuable to the squad or whoever he's playing for, really. Yeah, and like himself. that pairing's been good too. And to be clear, I don't really want to see Pospisil fight. I just wanted to see him and Marshan agitate each other. That's all you're about, just scrapping, eh? You just want oh. someone to get Marshan for ruining your first hit. I swore I'd have my revenge. <laughs> Actually, you want to see someone throw some punches. I don't know, Jack, were we able to get that Brandon Tana video from the Canucks cracking game? 
Yeah, I got it. You want it? You want to look, watch this, right? Watch this. All right, let's do it. Would you teach Pahal in a fighting lesson? Okay. Well, don't get hit because then there's always the way that you can. Groundbreaking. <laughs> Throw a few quick ones and pull a guy down. Yeah, you never lose that way. Okay, when I texted you earlier, you did not answer me, but I was wondering, when you guys were sharing some Kipper stories the other day, did you talk about when uh, you fought Hartnell and he fought and Kipper, like, lined up with Vokun? First of all, you never texted me anything about this Kipper self stuff. I'm looking through. No, I don't see anything. Uh, I've not. Talked. 923. Tonight? Yes. Well, you got you to gotta use. Like, my phone doesn't work in my house. Anyway, uh, no, I've never talked to Kipper about. Are you asking if I've ever talked to Kipper about the fight? No, no. I was wondering, like, were you looking at that? Were you watching him line up for a goalie fight? Or were you too, I was uh, entangled? Worry, well, I was worried. Well, I was I was watching it closely because I was like, well, I'm going to have to sucker Vokun if he starts to really get off on my boy Kipper. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know that Kipper won that fight, but the the best part was how tired Kipper was at the end of it. He was dying. He was like, holy, this red face and ready to pass out. So, and if you call me punching Hartnell in the hip. A fight, uh, uh, but funny story about that. I got a ticket in, in just outside of Pittsburgh last year. I was driving too fast. Anyway, the guy let me off because I brought up some stuff, and he must have went back to his vehicle and Googled my name or something, and he goes, well, I'm going to let you off because I saw you beat up Hartnell, and everyone in Pittsburgh hates Hartnell because he was a flyer, so that was the <laughs> So it got me off a ticket because I punched Hartnell in the hip a few times. So, yeah. <laughs> you got him good. Oh, yeah. You really got good. him good. Yeah. Oof. Trying to remember, was it Vokun who got hit by his own teammate? I think it was Keith Ballard. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, it was years ago. Years ago now. But I remember um, he was with the Panthers and he... Uh, they allowed a goal that they didn't love and Keith Ballard like went to like swing his stick and hit the post in frustration and he ends up like clipping his own goalie Smash in the head. Goalie. <laughs> well, well, I, I don't remember it, but I kind of wish I'd seen it now. I mean, you got the old YouTube machine in your hand, so I'll pull that one up tonight. Oh, and he's got the snacks going too. No, no. I got, someone gave me one of these. What are they? The nicotine patches or chew things that I oh yeah yeah keeps me awake. It's one in the morning here. It's tired. It really? oh, well, it was good. Oh, twelve fifteen. Anyway, time's hard. Time's hard. Usually, I'm snoring right now, Cammy. What was your take on Jacob Markstrom tonight? Does this make anything any easier when he's doing these things? When he's back on his <sighs> bullshit? We talked about a few weeks ago how Hannafin is not playing like a guy that has any confusion in his head as to what's going on. And I feel the same way about Markstrom. I think he's just out there playing, having fun. I don't think he cares if he comes or goes or whatever. He's so dialed in. He's just playing hockey and it's fun right now. Like that save in overtime, that is a very confident goaltender that's making that save. But, I, but as far as the Flames go, it, it makes it easy because you could just say, give me what I want or you don't get them. You know what I mean? Like, it's like they don't have to trade them. Yes, he's. it's going to be hard for him to be any more valuable. But on the other hand, it's like, well, we'll just keep him. He's clearly, it's, he's clearly worth what we're paying him. And... If we're not going to get the return we want, we'll, I'll roll the dice. We'll keep him another year. He can be traded next year if that's what needs to happen. But if we're not going to get the price we're asking for, no, no, no. You can't have him. Connie could be a very, very rich man. 
in a couple of weeks here. It's going to be good. See if he would two come weeks on tomorrow. And... Two weeks tomorrow to trade deadline. Yeah, if only he would come on, but he's clearly so busy. Text him again. Let late. him cook. Let him cook. All yeah. right, we're going to let uh, Rhett craft a new text to Connie. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we got your DoorDash hungry for more. We're going to take a look at the road ahead and get to some of your burning questions. We are well into the winter months now, and you can feel it, can't you? That urge to get away. Maybe some beach time to warm up those bones of yours. Maybe a hockey sports kind of road trip. Well, when you pack your bags, make sure you don't forget Alberta Blue Cross. There's only one thing better than sharing memories, and that's making new ones. Alberta Blue Cross travel insurance protects your memories and more wherever travel takes you. Visit ab.bluecross.ca slash travel for more information. Alberta Blue Cross, celebrating life's memorable moments inspired by hockey. Hey guys, it's Pinder chatting about Charm Diamond Center. Did you know that Charm has been Canadian owned and operated since 1972? And there's over 85 locations coast to coast to coast with Charm and their sister brands. Uh, get this now, you wanna get something custom made? How about custom room building delivered in less than four weeks? That's unreal. That is the Charm Masterpiece program and they've got unbeatable pricing policies as well. Whether it's mine diamonds or Canadian lab grown diamonds, check them out. For more information, go to charmdiamondcenters.com. That's charmdiamondcenters.com. All right, gang, listen up. It's time to learn the pro pose. Coach? Bend and snap. Beautiful form. Nice arm extension. Facial expression. I could use some work. All right, let's see it. The pro pose. What's that guy doing? I think that's the bend and snap. That's a whole different deal. Mm. Charm, home of the pro pose. Oh. <laughs> Wendy's is letting you win real food with your fantasy teams this year and daily face-off. For those of you who smoke the competition, Wendy's is rewarding you with weekly prizes that'll have you winning despite your lack of team building skills. Download the Wendy's app and score yourself 150 bonus reward points on your first order. Grab a sweet victory from the mouth-watering jaws of defeat along with some fresh, never frozen beef. Sign up to play daily face-off to win weekly prizes like the spicy chicken sandwich from Wendy's and the Wendy's app. And now back to Afterburner. Really appreciate you staying up so late tonight, Red. I know you guys were talking this morning about maybe getting producer Jack in on some of these. Oh, we got to get Jack going. He's so insightful and loved by all. He is. He really is. But Boomer said he can't ever show his face. So during the first intermission... I thought we could have this nice picture of producer Jack. Can you see it? Did you do a portrait of Jack? It's yes. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. I can't do. Okay, one second. It I'm leaving the mic. Like eyes. Oh, rogue. <laughs> the, Oof, it's good that Jack's not on the, on the screen. That's, that's a rough look. My yeah, God. If, if that, Are you kidding? Is handsome Squidward. If that's Jack. You should be honored to have these cheekbones. <laughs> Cammy, a real artist there. Thank you. Thank you. I really did my best. I need some I feel bad. I want to take advantage of all the notes you took. Pull, pull us something. Well, there's only friend. two more. <laughs> It's I not, thought you had pages no, there. <laughs> no, I took a note. I thought that was good. Like, come on, you're really, jeez, you got to get to know me. There's a lot, your expectations are too high. Progress, okay. not perfection, folks. <laughs> All right, what's my next one? How come the Flames are so good against top teams? I don't know. Sometimes I think it's the mark of a very medium team in any sport when what you do night in, night out is generally play to the level of your opponent. That's a good point. Because I feel like any sport, average teams I've been on, we could play with really good teams. You wouldn't get obliterated by them. But sometimes you would play a junk team, and it's like, man, why, why are we stooping to this? Yeah. I, I feel like it's all mental. 
But sometimes that's just the mark of an average average team or a team that I don't want to say the Flames lack identity because it really feels like they're starting to get something together here, especially with these young guys coming in. But maybe it's just a touch of they just don't know yet. Or maybe I'm completely off base giving Huska so much praise and maybe he's terrible at coaching. He can't get his guys to, to play against shitty teams. Come on, Huska. Pick it the duality up. Duality of Rhett. <laughs> Come on. Do it better. Let's go, Huska. And then yeah, uh, the only other note I had was Markstrom, and it's getting boring talking about how good he is. Like, yeah. trade him or don't. This is annoying. And you're screwing us out of a draft pick. Continually. Yeah, still uh, Steelers wheel stuck in the middle with you. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, there's one player that I know you really like tonight, so we're going to do our DoorDash. Hungry for more? Restaurants, groceries, pharmacies, bakeries, flower shops. DoorDash really has everything you need. Actually, at a friend's house, her Bluetooth speaker broke, and we DoorDashed a Bluetooth speaker. Shut the front door. To keep the party going, and it was a really good, cheap little speaker. Wow. We were very happy. You know what we did? We opened the DoorDash app. We chose what we wanted, and it was left outside her door with the default contactless delivery setting. The Double Dash. We got food, too, with no extra fees. Everyone got what they needed. And I am hungry for more Oliver Shillington because that was just so dang fun to watch tonight. I'm I'm 100% with you. That was what I would be hungry for more as well. He's flying around. He's clearly starting to feel it. And we've missed him. He's It's, it's such a dynamic skill set, and not everybody has it. And... If, when he's on his game playing the way he was tonight, that is a ton of fun to watch. Like he's all over the ice, he's skating so good. He's involved in everything. So more Shillington. I agree. Please, please, more. I remember that first game back with the Wranglers for him. Like he gave it all he had that night, but it had been so long. I remember, you know, they had to like pull him out the next day and saying, like, ah, it's gonna manage it. It's like, yeah, how can you skate like that? And not pull everything in your lower body. His legs are going. I don't even know how to describe it. It's it's amazing. But he's quick he, all over the place. Ended up with uh, three shots tonight. And we're starting to see that ice time creep up a little bit too, which is nice. Like obviously uh he's not gonna be carrying the minutes of a an Anderson or a Hannafin right now, but it's starting to look like it. Could probably he's go going to, he's, get yep. called on to play more significant minutes if something happens in the next yeah. two weeks here. You don't feel too intimidated by putting him on the ice more right now. You'd be mm -hmm. happy to do it. So if there's a move made, you've got a guy sitting there ready to chew up some of those minutes for sure. Yeah, there are uh, certainly other. That's when you've had some more egregious turnovers than him as of late. Shit happens. Yeah. Oh, no, it does. It's not an indictment of anyone's game. Well, you what did you think of Hunt and his uh, little call-ups to the um, Huberto and Sharon Govich line? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's stupid, but sometimes it is easier. You go up there, you don't feel the need to create anything. I'm going to go up and down to the wing. I'm going to bang. We're going to retrieve pucks, try to get after it. You, you're not the driver of the offensive plays so i've always thought you, know, you can have two offensive guys with another guy uh just a puck retriever grinder hard working kind of guy and it seems to be he's done a good job with that those more offensively talented guys he it makes his game real simple i think his game's probably simple anyway but it looks good when you're playing with those offensive guys because you're getting in there causing havoc and they're making some plays around you just saw a comment come up uh, in the chat. There is Shilly still an RFA. Uh, he's still making uh, two point five a year, but he is a UFA after this season. So you'd have to think that hopefully, uh, you know, if things continue to trend in this direction, there's a world where a uh, player and team can get something worked out. Yeah, that's odd. I didn't even thought about that. I didn't even know he was a UFA. I mean, that's causes more concern you want to get it because you watch a play tonight 
you hope he wants to sign back here. The team's been good to him. I think it's a good situation for him. So you're you're probably keeping your fingers crossed. But I'm not. I hadn't put any thought into that at all. To be fair, I wonder how much thought he's even put into it when the focus has probably yeah. just been getting back on the ice. Yeah, go play, get ready to get back out there, see how you feel. Well, it's you're right. He probably hasn't put a lot of thought into it. But if you play the way you did tonight, there's going to be a lot of teams interested which not a good thing for the flames if they're worried about keeping them. You could almost say that everyone would be hungry for more. Look at that. So cheeky circle of life. The code is nation 25. If you don't know it by now. Yeah. No kidding. People nation 25. Jack, you got to put it up on the screen there. Don't yeah. You? Come on, Jack. Jack. Brett's but coming for your gig. <laughs> he's mad about your drawing. I thought it was lovely. You know, I worked on this for at least two minutes. I think you should keep working on it. I'm going to draw you next. <laughs> no, thank you. No, no, I'm good with my self-portrait. I see myself right there. It's not good. Not good. It's great. Oh, oh another thing that I saw um, pop up in there, too. Thought we could chat about quick. Uh, GeoTubers Rock asked this uh, about uh, Nazem Kadri during Ramadan. He, uh, Salam Valji did a story with him about this last year, but he, um, Naz said that he did fast during minor hockey, but with the demands of the NHL, can't really do that. Uh, it wasn't an issue for him. It was more so not drinking water. I, that's a fun fact. I know a lot of soccer players deal with this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's completely out of my scope of expertise. That. I don't know everything about it. So. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I drink beer, so and Pedialyte, apparently. Yeah, well, I got to fight off the hangover. Yeah, do you are do we go to a Pedialyte or a boost or like an insurer? What's no, what's Pedialyte. superior? I want, I just, I, yeah, Pedialyte. Re, re, the electrolytes. I got to replenish the electrolytes. Every time I have a boost, I just think of Chris Draper. And his crushed face. Yeah, that was one of the ugliest ones. Did you ever watch that special? I didn't watch the special, but I read like the big, long um, There Will Be Blood series about it. Yeah. It was that was intense hockey. I never watched the special. Jack, you ever watched that special? No, I haven't. Apparently, it's supposed to be quite good. Something What's it on? Probably. I don't know what it's even on, but the, it's it's about the that battle and Draper's face getting smashed by Lemieux. That's that was about as dirty as it gets. Another time, I remember I uh, I got to interview him about it once. In the Maritimes, and it didn't end up even being close to like the most fascinating part of the interview with him. It was because uh, we were chatting in Moncton, and he had played in the AHL there. And I asked him about like his favorite memory in the building, and it wasn't even hockey for him. It was like coming back from a road trip, and he was a rookie, so we had to unload the bus. And he said there'd been like a concert in the Coliseum, and he walks out there, and the Tragically Hip were playing that night, and they were still like around, and he got to just like talk to the Tragically Hip and play ball hockey there. Just sitting there hanging out, having a yeah. good <laughs> Wow. Well, that's pretty cool, too. That's that's a wicked story to be able to do that. Dougie Gilmore was good friends with the boys from the hip, with Gordon, those guys. Really? And so I got to meet him a couple times, too. Good people. Good people. When was that? Oh, I played with him here in Buffalo, Dougie in Buffalo. So, I don't know, three or four times we saw him. I went and hung out with him. Yep. Really What's your cool. favorite hip song? Oof. I celebrate the whole collection. <laughs> Isn't there some? Song? I mean, that's a good answer. Yeah, I won't. I won't take that from you. I don't have a favorite. Wheat yeah. cakes. That's a good pick. Depends on the mood. It does. Where are you yeah. sitting? What are you doing? And the, it, it, and the funny thing is you're down at where I started in Florida. No one even knows who the tra tragically hip are. So. 
Yeah, true. I guess, yeah, and just never really. Nope, they didn't break into off. the southern states at all. They just, they didn't make it down there. Border towns and, and Canadian content for sure, but not global. It feels kind of special. Like it was something that's kind of uniquely ours. Yep. Yeah. Went to oh, one yeah. of the concerts and when he was going through all that stuff. Highly. Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam gave them that big shout out. That was cool. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. now you're depressing everyone. Okay. No, you know what? We're going to take that next break. We're going to reset. Everyone drop your favorite Tragically Hip song in the comments and we'll reminisce. And we'll all be happy when we come back. Go. Greta, it's our home away from home for Afterburner. We'll be there for live watch parties throughout the season. Should be your spot regardless. Before, during, and after the game, grab a cocktail, something from the menu, let the games begin, or maybe you get into the game yourself. Over 50 arcade games from vintage to state of the art. Load up some credits on that Greta game card of yours and get at it. Greta Calgary, located at 213 10th Avenue Southwest. Check them out online, gretabar.com. You know the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino is the go-to place to watch Flames and other televised sports action, but St. Patrick's Day is coming, and get ready for a St. Patrick's extravaganza like no other. Join us on March 17th for a day filled with fun and festivities. Kick off the celebrations with our exciting slot tournament. Registration at 2, tournament begins at 3. You can test your luck and win amazing prizes. Don't miss their Irish-themed lunch buffet from 11 until 2.30 and their Irish-themed dinner buffet from 5 until 10 p.m. Then get ready to dance and sing along to live music from 8 till midnight. The talented Morrissey's Private Stock is all lined up to keep the party going all night long. And of course, what's St. Patrick's Day without some green beer? Raise a glass and toast to the luck of the Irish. Mark your calendars and join us for a day filled with Irish charm and entertainment. See you on March 17th at the Grey Eagle. If you're thinking of buying or selling your home in the Calgary area, there's one guy you've got to talk to. That's Derek Newman of the Derek Newman Real Estate Group with CIR Realty. Buying or selling doesn't really matter. Derek does it all. He's a volunteer in the community, active in sports around the city, whether it's golf, curling, huge Flames fans. So talking sports or talking about the real estate market, definitely give him a shout. He's approachable, trustworthy, and hardworking. Also, Derek's got a pretty vast network. He's even got access to some homes often that aren't even on the market yet. And you can ask him about his complimentary home staging consultation as well. Buying or selling, call him or text him right now at 403-619-6661. Derek will make it easy for you. Get Derek and his network to work for you. That's Derek Newman. Email him at dnewman at cirrealty.ca. More post-game reaction right here. We're back on Afterburner. We got some good hip stories in the chat here. They did play Lollapalooza. I think they also played Woodstock 99, like the disaster Woodstock. Really? Yeah. And that's why there were so many like Canadian flags in the crowd. I don't remember that part. They were not included in the documentary, there. unfortunately. It wasn't there, so. I mean, that was probably for the best. People were getting trench mouth and such. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, not, not as, great. It's not as cool. Yeah, I'm doing a bad job of picking up the vibe on that one. So, going to steal a quote from the Flames post game. Uh, you kind of talked about Jacob Markstrom's mindset earlier and how he's probably just like dialed and wherever he is, just going to do his thing. He said, I like winning hockey games. That's what it's about. There you go. That's kind of all you need to hear from him on a night nope. like tonight. Boys are having fun. Let's go win. Play hard. Give her. Now let's see what's ahead of them up now. So off until Saturday, we know what it is. Battle of Alberta. Going to try to get that first win against the Oilers this season. The party's at Greta. If you want to come down and check things out, right, you should come. I, If people would let me know things were coming out, I'm coming on Wednesday. On Wednesday, Coming next okay. Wednesday. Anyway, yeah, I should come to to uh, Saturday's event, but I can't. I'll be in Pittsburgh. You could eat 42 chicken nuggets and totally upstage Pinder. I don't want to upstage Pinder in that regard. I want to do it in some ways, not that way. All right. Well, maybe you can do another page of notes. 
and then you'd really show him who's boss next time. No, <laughs> I don't even think I could outdo him in notes because he does so many notes. It's gross. He, he takes notes about his day. It's stupid. I, he's like surprisingly organized for a chaos person. He's painfully organized. He's texting me about this and that. I'm like, I, 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 I need a two hour notice. That's it. I, I'm not going to fill out a Google spreadsheet for you so you can organize your life. Get out of here. Just say when and where. Mm. But all right, we'll get you next week. But Oilers 6 3 and 1 in their past 10 right now. Boston, of course, beat them in overtime last night. Edmonton will be on the second half of a back to back for Saturday. They've got Minnesota tomorrow. Then after that, Calgary's off until Tuesday. They'll host the LA Kings. They've kind of righted the ship after that nosedive in January. Well, after getting snot bubbled. Are you talking about LA in Buffalo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They got their asses handed to them and then they've turned it around. But I don't know. I still wonder. I, I, it just feels like a team that's too good to be struggling like they were. Now, again, they've won. So maybe it's changed. But I don't know. I don't trust them. But if you're going to have a dip like that, isn't this the time of year to do it where you still have a decent enough stretch to get things right before playoffs? I guess. I how about Or you no can simply dip? try to not lose just almost an entire month. <laughs> or just don't dip and play good consistently. That's also an option. Sorry, you I'm interrupting your road ahead. Yeah, so uh, Kings have the four-game win streak coming into tonight's match against the Predators. It is 2-1 for the Preds right now. they got about 10 minutes left. Quentin Byfield's goal the other night was nasty. Very impressive. Yes, looked like a beer leaguer. Wait, no, he was looking really good. Not a beer leaguer. He made the defenders look like beer leaguers. There you go. That's Yeah, good. there we are. And then we'll wrap up Road Ahead. Uh, next Saturday, March 2nd, the Flames host the Pittsburgh Penguins. Pens are fighting hard for a playoff spot right now. Dubas could be pondering a little shakeup if 32 thoughts is to be believed. But, of course, that's Kipper's night going to the Raptors. That's what it's all about next yep. Saturday. It should be quite a party, I'm expecting. What did you think of the Red Mile when it was going on then? Um, Are you sad that you couldn't be like out in the middle of it? No, I spent an hour there once after we beat Detroit, I think, and I loved it, but it was too much. Like, I, I lived not far from there, and so I could sit on my deck and hear it going on and stuff, but and I thought it was great. The city rallied around it, and they loved it, and it was tons of fun and all of that. Like obviously it was a it was a great time in my career and I think for the city I I I, I don't think I wanted to hang like I said I was there for an hour that was good that uh, that was fine I think it would have been fun you're too recognizable and it, it, I it had been better to just be a regular person going down to the red mile than what we were at that time because you were getting absolutely bombarded you couldn't walk a step and it was it was like i gotta get out of here it's too much as cool as it was it was definitely too much but i was happy that everyone else was doing it my buddies were having a hell of a time and they prevented you from getting your beauty sleep nah, i don't need beauty sleep i look great dazzling mm -hmm. Stupendous. All right. That is your road ahead from Village Honda at the Northwest Auto Mall and online at villagehonda.com. New in stock inventory on the ground. Start your automotive adventures at Village Honda. New vehicle pricing is MSRP. All right. We got time for a couple of questions here. Hit us, Jack. Should Conroy be worried that Shillington could walk after this season? I think we touched on this like a little bit earlier. I would be, uh, Surprised if there isn't enough of a relationship built here where if things kind of trend the way they are now, if Shillington continues to progress, play well, increase his minutes, I don't see why something couldn't be hammered out here. Uh, He's on a pretty reasonable contract now. I don't know how much that would change. I, yeah, my opinion is that Shillington's had a good run here. He's been put in a good situation. The team was very understanding of his situation and what he's going through. I would think 
that there's a mutual respect for each other and that Conroy would be very aware of what Shillington's intentions are. And I mean, comeback isn't over yet, especially with your mental health. It's not no. just like, it's not just boom, better. It's a journey and there's like still going to be days. And I think Oliver's even said this too, in uh, some pieces with Eric Francis and solemn Volgi that, you know, some days are going to be harder than others and there's not necessarily a finish line. So hopefully you can, it'd be cool if you stay around and just continue to have some of those supports in place. What does Shillington's next contract look like? Oof, I have no insight on that. I mean, houses you're going to finish up. Uh, I don't even know what his comparables are. Like it's. Yeah, I mean, uh, we don't even have a, a dozen games yet. Yeah, he's come a long way, and it's it's hard to, it's almost hard to think about that side of it yet. I mean, know that it's coming up fast. If you're not going to make the playoffs, the season ends in April. Like it's it's not far off, but it still feels like it's fresh. That it's almost just let's celebrate that he's back and playing well. Let's mm -hmm. let's leave it at that for now and worry about the next steps later on. Yeah, and as someone said down there, uh, can't assume it's his choice. Maybe he wants a change of scenery. That's his prerogative if that's the way it shakes out. Yep. Yep. All right. What's next? Is Kuzmenko's conditioning in question? Not by me. Yeah, I don't think that's... We did see him get some minutes uh, trimmed in the final frame, but I don't know if it would have been more about some decision-making things. I don't know if necessarily it looked like a conditioning issue. Uh, I... I trust that Huska knows exactly what's going on. And if it is a conditioning issue, I think they'll work on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got no insight that it is a conditioning issue. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I, I would believe that Huska knows what's going on. And if he wants to play him, doesn't want to play him, shortens it, is ice time or, or not. It's, but to say it's his conditioning, I can't say that. He did end up with a 10 25 of ice time tonight. That's the, Second lowest on the team, but this is how Huska's been sending messages all year. Hopefully, uh, they're able to figure something out here before Saturday. Uh-oh. Who is this who just joined us? Boom's up past his bedtime. I I'll call, Listen, you can't argue. Well, we better read the question. Is she, yes, it should from uh, Dean Malbierg. A Chicago deep dish, really pizza or a casserole? Now, did you call him Malbierg on purpose as a joke or? Dion Malbierg? Dion? Dion? No, I'm sorry, Boomer. I'm sorry, Boomer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I believe it's a pizza. And who am I to argue with the Chicago Chicagoans on what they describe as pizza? So if they're calling the deep dish a pizza, it's a pizza. It's not a casserole. A cat? No way. It's a, it's definitely a pizza. Yeah. I don't know how you define a casserole. It's a good I don't point. think of casseroles as layered. I think of them as just a bunch of stuff in there. And a casserole's in like a a glass. Yes. Right. It needs to be in a Pyrex. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Bullberg. Thank you for your question, Deanne. We'll do a couple more here, Jack. All right. If we trade Hannafin and Tanev and our short D is the best 44 in Flames history, able to lace them up for the rest of the year. No, the fat guy uh, on the other end of this mic is definitely not capable. I get ridiculed every day when I step on the ice with my 14, 12, and 10-year-old teams. And uh, it's it's a far fall from grace. Once you finally accept that you're useless and can't do it anymore, then you just pack it all in and let everything go, and you don't even think about coming back. I've moved so on. Brutal I'm on to bigger too. and better, clearly, right, Cammy? But, like, I couldn't handle turps from kids that age. Like, I heard a bunch, like, you know the little minor hockey teams that go and mm -hmm. watch, like, the Hitman games in a group? 
Yeah. I heard it like a little while ago, I heard them yelling at a player to hit the gym. I was like, I'd never recover if a child told me to hit the gym. Like, I'm out. It's done. Yeah. They're smart asses, these little bastards nowadays. No respect. <laughs> no respect. All right, Jack, we'll do one more here. Who is in the wings? Oh, who is in the wings for 5 6 on defense? I feel that's the scary spot. There is no one in the wings that's definitely going to fill those. But you're clearly you're talking about trading Taniv and Hannafin, which probably is going to happen and will happen. You don't know what you're going to get in return. There's a, very, there's a very good chance that there's a defenseman coming back the other way. Whether he's a top four or not, I don't know. But a and, nice and, defensive prospect. And I think probably what you establish at that point is I, it doesn't matter. Right, you're you're if you're moving ten, if you're moving Hannif, and you're moving these guys, you're moving them because you're turning the page and it's time for a new start, and you're not really hanging your hats on making the playoffs. So whoever your five or six defensemen are, kind of irrelevant. Give a kid a chance. Give everyone a chance. Who cares at that point? Yeah, those Wranglers, oh, they've been short bodies, too, for a while now, though. Though Brett Sutter is uh, back now, and he's been, he's been racking up a nice couple points here the last few games. Well, he's a veteran. He knows exactly how to play in that league, but I don't think he's good on defense. Are you going to tell him that? <laughs> no, probably not. Do what you need to do, Sutz. Gosh, I remember going to watch him play when he was with the Kootenai Ice. Good times. Good time. R.I.P. Cranbrook. <laughs> oh, Dean wants attention. Yeah, well, okay. Well, ask a. This is Dean being an idiot reporter. Ask a good question. That's a kind of pie. tart. Butter tart, lemon tart, meat pie tart. What the hell are you talking about? Boom's hungry tonight. All of his questions are about food. Have you ever had a meat pie tart? It's a meat pie. It's not a tart. You dumbass. Is tortilla? I'm, no, no, uh, tortilla is a pie, not a tart. I don't think tarts are covered, are they? No, tart is just there's no, there's no meat tart. Kootenai sucks. Ooh. Butter the tart. Of this would be man. Mine. Butter tart. All right, we're gonna settle this. Uh, boom! Next time we're on the afterburner together, you can pull out your nice guitar, and I'll pull out my bass, and we'll battle. Devil went down to Georgia style. Oh. And then we'll see if you can say Kootenai sucks. There's a challenge being laid. I like it. I might even tune in. Oh, we could do that when you're here next week. That's right. I won't yeah. even have to be up late. All right. I think things are going off the rails here. You need to go to bed. I don't know beef, what a beef wellington is. Beef wellington is a, a, a fillet that's wrapped with pastry, and there's a, then there's a there's some mushrooms and mustard beef around the about around the fillet, and then the pastries around it. Very difficult to cook. Cooked well, quite tasty. Where where does one find a beef Wellington in Calgary? You make it your damn self. That's oh, right. God. where you find it. All right. We'll give that a roll too. Or we'll go to Boom's house. Yeah. We'll have a great oh. cook off. Yeah. Why doesn't he invite us over? Yeah, Dean. Jerk. Oh, now he goes quiet. Yeah, well. This is, an this is getting ridiculous. No, this is an inside story. My father oh. gets right hammered and almost without fail will have to tell you about his beer batter recipe. And it's, it's, it's a beer batter recipe. Well, tell us about it. <laughs> well, I don't. It's not mine. <laughs> it's, it's the DUGs. Yeah. It's not yours to share. <laughs> no, I don't even. It's a secret recipe. It's the Colonel. Man, well, maybe we'll get him to reveal it one day. Yeah. Big secrets. I tried to get Bearcat to. He wrote in his book about a hangover cure they used to give the guys way back in the day. He wouldn't tell me what it was. God, I feel like I've tried everything. I wish that I'd have talked to Bearcat about it, apparently. Yeah. Huh. Man had an answer for everything. You know what? Who you know who would know? Peter Marr. 
Did you reach out to him too tonight? I text his kid and his kid ignored me. So I was going to kind of. Anyway. We're going to we'll plan get ahead next time. We're going to have like the greatest yeah. lineup of guests you guys have next ever seen. Next time you and I do an afterburner, we're just going to be littered with guests. We're going to go till three in the morning. It'll be a real who's who of who is available. I might have to do it when I'm there because if I have to stay up till three here, I'll pass it. Yeah. No. We'll plan accordingly. All right. All right. Let's call it, gang. Bye, Dean. Three, two for the Flames and OT. Party at Greta on Saturday. The boys are back tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your Pedialyte. Thanks, Cammie. Have a Thanks great night. Thanks for being night. with us, friends. Have a great night.